Super so good training there for you on the show. 360 Sport on Trust TV. I'm Adeni Aji Shafe. Just let you have a feel of what is happening in the world of sport. In the training camp of Eagles over there in Aqua Ibom State. Well, good one for them. Eagles are back to ready training. Their first training ahead of this crucial tide against Libya. Well, right now, we'll be looking at that that has to do with our national team, the Super Eagles, who will be facing the Knights of Libya on Friday and also on Tuesday, back to back. And it's a big one because it's a double header between Nigeria and Libya for the AFCON 2025 qualifiers that they will be playing. And Eagles, they are all in camp, uh, really bubbling. They are just saw how they train, their first training session. And right now, we'll be giving you much more details concerning that team. Right, let's start with that first story. That has to do with the coach of that team, AFCON 2025 qualifier. Super Eagles must beat Libya home and away, according to Auguste Neguavon, the one he calls the Rezo, that is the coach of the team. And he's saying, well, we just have to pick the six point that stake be, uh, between Nigeria and Libya. Nigeria must win those two games, either at home or away. And that's a big one because uh, Nigerians know how difficult it could be because it's back to back. Both of them understanding themselves for these games. But according to Cirezo, he has the player, at least uh, he knows that the Eagles are back to ready and the players are really raring to go. They want to make sure they win these games to make Nigerians happy. Consider what is going on about the economy of this nation. Eagles need to perform and make us so proud uh, concerning those two games there. Well, right now, now, joining us to talk sport is our from Sudeja is Tenny Balogun. Good to have you, Tenny. Okay, uh, Tenny joining us there from uh, Sudeja. We were talking about uh, the Eagles uh, for the fact that you saw the, the training there uh, for the team where they're really getting their acts together before the matter be coming up on Friday. And right now, according to their coach, Auguste Neguavon, he says, they must win the game home and away, not just in Nigeria. They will also go to Benghazi and do well. And at least that's a, a, at least expectations from Nigeria and so all the Super Eagles that they should win both home and away to get the six point coming from Iguavon. And you want to agree with the coach there, Tony? Okay, if you play our cast well, and if you are to, let's, let's assume you are Auguste de Guavon. What will you do differently? <laughs> Let me at least uh, put your leg there, Tony. What will you do differently to see how you can get six points from these two matches? Well, 
seriously, we know that Victor Sime won't be playing. And although we have uh, potent attackers who are also ready, Ademola Lukman, Victor Boniface, and the likes are there. Experienced uh, Kilichi Yanacho is also part of that team. Rafael Oyedika and all the likes are really trying to see how they will do well in this competition. Stanley Wabali, Maduka Okoye, not forgetting that Maso Basu the three goalkeepers that we have at the back. The camp is really bubbling ahead of this tournament. They'll be having their last training tonight before they will play on Friday against the Knights of uh, Libya. It's a big battle because uh, the coach of Libya is already uh, playing some mind games saying they are not ready for Nigeria. Well, <laughs> Nigerians are saying, if you are not ready, why are you here? You should have stayed back in Libya. But it's a serious game because we need to win and also make a mark, at least send a signal that we are, we are ready for this AFCON 2025. The same way we want to also send signal for the World Cup because Eagles have not been doing so when it comes to the World Cup qualifier. They need to use these particular games to fight in themselves ahead of the qualifiers. They'll be supported, uh, that's the coaching crew now, being supported by Ilechuku and Ogumodede to support uh, Augustine Eguavon there. According to the coach, Eagles needs to win these two matches and really they want to win the two matches over there in uh, Benghazi and also in Uyo here in Nigeria. Well, Joel Ajay is on standby too. Joel Ajay, are you there? Okay, while we're waiting for him to actually join us right now, we see continue with our stories uh, about Super Eagles. The camp is bubbling, like I said. Super Eagles will give 100% against Libya. Coming from Alex Iwobi, that's our second story on the show. Iwobi, Alex, uh, is at least uh, has been one of the senior players of the national team, Super Eagles. And he's saying right now, Nigerians should expect 100% from them. According to the way the game is coming right now, they want to give their 100% and they really want to make Nigerians happy. Happy. Tony, that's coming from Alex Iwobi. Yes, um, if we look at the Nigerian squad individually, in, a good number of them are doing very well in their individual teams. And um, I would expect to see that, although I mean, it's a different playing ground, but I would expect to see that um, level of commitment, that level of excellence in the squad because, I mean, there are players, it won't be himself that made the statement, he's doing very well um, at Fulham. So I think, um, I think, um, I, I mean, it would be really, really nice to see, um, to see Nigeria play with that level of commitment the athletes have in their teams. So and it would be disappointing if they don't live up to expectations because there's a lot of expectations. Yeah, now, picking from what you say, it will be disappointing because we know that Eagles, to, to, to be candid with ourselves, the consistency uh, could be shaky. So right now, uh, I'm picking from what you said, it will be disappointing. And uh, are you also referring to being uh, inconsistent when it comes to performance? Eagles, today they win, tomorrow they play draw, next tomorrow they actually maybe they could, you know, they, it's, it's not been consistent so far, even though we know that, yes, it's getting better bit by bit. Is that what you meant? Football from Eagles actually been expected there. Apart from the good football, we want results. Nigerians are really hoping this moment, Friday and Tuesday, will make them smile again. It has been <laughs> a tough moment for Nigeria. So, football or sport always bring all of us together as one. No tribe, no religion. We all play this particular game of sport we actually, that actually unites all of us. But right now, we've been talking to Tony Balogun. Join us from Suleja. And we're talking about Super Eagles preparation. Is actually doing well because. 
because it's high over there in uh, Kwaibon, where the teams are trying to see how they will fight tune before they meet the night of Libya, a double header Friday and Tuesday. For them to also see if they can, able, if they are able to win these two games, automatically Eagles have done the business of making it to Afcon. Well, right now, she's talking about Eagles. Well, let's talk about a member or chairman House Committee on Sport. Uh, right, uh, right now, are saying that he's confident that uh, Super Eagles will win against uh, Libya. Kabiru Amadu. Confident Super Eagles will triumph over Libya. He is the House Committee uh, uh, Chairman of House Committee of Four Sports. And right now, uh, he's saying, well, he believes that our team, the national team, will do well because uh, he has that confidence in that particular team. A lot of people, a lot of uh, football uh, stakeholders have been talking tough concerning this, that uh, Eagles will make us proud. And we just saw that they will do us proud, really. Well, Tony, let me take it from you now. According to the uh, Chairman House Committee on Sport, Kabiru Amadu, Presenting uh, Gus over there in, from Zamfara, say, well, he believes Eagles will do us proud against Libya. Okay, talking about that uh, story there, well, let's digress a bit and talk about their training, Eagles training. We know that uh, this player, they play in week in, week out over there in their different clubs. But uh, uh, since they came to Nigeria, they've been able to have, have at least a full house and they train uh, together. So we're expecting the last training today where uh, Eagles, will, before they will also be facing Libya. Well, uh, Libya too will also have the chance to also train, although that they have to share it. Maybe Eagles will do first quickly before Libya will do theirs. But right now, Eagles training uh, is something that uh, we know when everybody comes together, the coach wants to see how uh, the players are really fit and who are really at their best ahead of the competition. Uh, from what you are seeing, can you say <laughs> that Eagles are ready? Okay, well, you are confident that Eagles will do well there. For Super Eagles, they just have to get their acts together. And Nigerians are really rooting for them to do well. Anytime they come together, be it Flamingos, Falconet, Golden Eagles, or Flying Eagles, even Super Eagles and Super Falcons, Nigerians always unite. And if it's in athletics and ball, go out there to represent us. Nigerians are always chanting fly. And uh, seriously, we hope that they will make us proud on Friday and on Tuesday ahead of uh, these uh, crucial qualifiers. Why are we talking about the Super Eagles? Well, during this particular uh, AFCON 2025 qualifiers, before the list was actually released, we've seen some Nigerians who are doing so well in their different club. One of them is Tolu Arokudari, who plays for Genk in Belgian Jupila League. And right now he says, my Super Eagles time will come. Because immediately Victor Osimhen was actually declared unfit for these games. Uh, well, a lot of uh, uh, football party went to town to see who they will be inviting, but Arakudari couldn't make that team, even though he has been superlative form for his club, Genk of uh, Belgium. Right now, he say, well, I believe my time will come. And also the coach, Iguavon, has actually uh, uh, mentioned the reason why he invited uh, Kelechi and Nacho, because a lot of Nigerians were hoping that, uh, that Sarokudari would be invited. But the coach said, well, I'm sticking to experience because uh, Ian Nacho is more experienced and that is why I'm, staying with, I'm sticking with him. So 
Right now, Arokodare is uh, a player that is already saying, well, my Super Eagles time will come and I will, I will wait for my own time. This time around, let's digress and talk with uh, Joel Ajayi to see what he has for us concerning this. Yes, we, before you join us, Joel, uh, we've been talking about Super Eagles and right now we are still on Super Eagles. But one of the uh, player, Nigerian players applying his trade abroad says his own time will come. Good to have you on the show, Joel. Okay. Okay, as we are expecting six points right now, Nigerians too are expecting six points. And before you join us, we're talking about uh, Tolu Arokodari, who says his own Super Eagles time will come. Because after Osimhen uh, well, well, couldn't uh, get a call-up due to injury, Nigerians were hoping maybe uh, Iguavon will go out for him. But right now, he says well, his own time will come because Iguavon opted for Kelechi and there. What can you say about this? Across the globe, we have 
some of the fantastic players. But you know, like he said, everybody has their own time. Even mm. in this world, there is time for everything. But I think uh, 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 Arukuda is trying to just call the attention of the of the of Nigeria and the whole. Yes, he's doing well. There is no doubt about it. He's doing extremely well in his club in Belgium. But we still have some players that are doing well. Mm. And then, if you look at a bit technically, uh, Super Ibu, I mean, the NFL or technical team, they have uh, the kind of player that they are used to. If they are to put they are to hard, it means your 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 skill, your talent, your strength, and banging goals for your club will be you no, know, will be a stigma to them, so that they can divide them. Everybody are speaking, but they are speaking for themselves. But I believe. Isan will come as he said. Okay. Isan will come as he said, coming from Joel Ajayi there, joining us via Zoom. Good, good one there. And uh, Tenny, I'm sure you have something to say. I saw you <laughs> smiling. <laughs> Tenny, let's have your view concerning this. Yes, That forward is always uh, a stark one because each time we look at Eagles, we always have so many strikers. In fact, globally, when it comes to football, you have so many attackers. Everyone wants to score, and the fame is always with the attackers, <laughs> defenders, goalkeepers. Who knows what they've done wrong that uh, attention is not always on them, but only for the attacker that scored the goals. But right now, let's uh, talk about our junior category of footballers. They call them the Flying Eagles. They will be playing at the Wafo B as we speak right now. They are over there in Ikene, Ogun State, where they've been training and before they jet out to Togo, where it will be happening. But yesterday they play a friendly game and Flying Eagles fly past Simorio, intensified preparations ahead of Tony. They won their game 4 1. And good one for the team. They are really trying their best. Coach Zubairo trying to see how he will at least get the best out of this player. 30 of them are in camp. And it will be thrown down to 20 when the final list will be released according to the media of that particular team there. Well, that's a good one coming from them. I want to look at it, Joel Ajayi. Uh, right now, the team are really intensifying efforts or preparations ahead of this tournament coming up where... If they are able to get to at least uh, uh, the semi-final, uh, the winner of this competition automatically qualifies for the African uh, uh, category while they also go for the Under-20 World Cup. Joel. For them, 
because they, there is facilities. The, the, the reason why uh, at least they move to uh, Lagos State and Lagos Home State is to, for them to have a better facility to train. Because uh, as far as I'm concerned, when they train uh, in Tibaco uh, um, projects at uh, uh, Monshula, the other stadium, I think uh, it's synthetic and then I don't think it's, uh, it's good for them. So moving to the uh, state uh, to continue their preparation for the tournament is a very good one for, for the team. And then, and then I have uh, faith in the team that they are going to do well when the computer starts uh, properly. And the uh, coach has been trying to at least to invite one or two or three foreign players so that they will have the glamour, they will have value to the team. I believe we are going to be there. We are going to be at the National uh, nation Cup at that uh, end of game and then we are going to be at the World Cup. Yeah, talking about under 17 there. Well, Tony just had what he said. I'm sure you have something to say concerning Fly Eagles' preparation. They won their player as a friendly game yesterday, 4 1. And now they are really trying to see how they can fight to that team. Uh, Kozubero is trying his best to see how they can get the best of this player. 30 will be pulled down to 20 uh, concerning that team ahead of the competition. Well, seriously, our team, they need to get their acts together. Just like Joel Ajayi and Tennis said, we need to get the best of them. Going to those days that we dominate the world when it comes to the junior category of football international. So right now, we need to get it right. They're going for Wafu B in Togo, and they will be uh, trying their best to see how they will do well. We just want to see them get into qualify for the Af Africa Under-20, and from there also make it to the World Cup. Who knows? Maybe this time around, they will get to come back with a trophy that has been leading Nigeria for a while. We want to see them doing well. And we're wishing Flying Eagles, led by Kozubairo, all the best. The same thing goes with the Super Eagles. We're also wishing them the best as they prosecute their uh, double header against Libya Friday and Tuesday. Away from football, let's talk about some Nigerians who are into handball. And I'm sure Tenny will be happy concerning this. You're a handballer too. So <laughs> let's have this story with you first. African Club Handball uh, Championship will be coming up over there in Morocco. La Jeune Morocco is the venue where they'll be playing. Ocheho, that's the president of Nigeria, that's Handball Federation of Nigeria. HFN charges plateau peacocks to make Nigerian proud. They are there trying to see what they will do uh, concerning these games. And right now, well, the team uh, already uh, move out to see how they will play this particular game. They will be playing different uh, in Group C. Let's have it. Uh, about three other clubs joining them in Group C. We have uh, Plateau Picos of Nigeria, Petro Atletico of Angola, Andre Nziko of Cameroon, and you have U.S. Nocesa of Morocco. All uh, these teams will be facing Plateau Picos of Nigeria in Group C, played at La Gion over there in Morocco. And according to HFM president, he is really imploring the girls to do us proud by making sure they represent Nigeria well at this championship. Well, let's start with Tony first. <laughs> Tony, how are you feeling hearing at least this on board story? Okay, let, let, let me throw this at you, Tony, before we go to Joel. Uh, have you ever faced them uh, playing any, uh, in, in playing handball? Because you mentioned size. 
Okay. No, no, no. I mean, I don't have to face them, thank God. <laughs> uh, you seem to be scared of that. Is it? Is, are they so huge uh, as handballers? Tenny, are you there? <laughs> yes, we can hear you. We can hear you, Tony. Go ahead. <laughs> As a handballer, at least I want to see maybe the fear of a plateau pickup should be the beginning of wisdom for the remaining team from Angola, from Cameroon, and also from Morocco. That's the cost of Joel Ajayi. You hear what Tenny said. <laughs> uh, looking at his size alone, you look at the visuals there, really, the ladies are huge, right? Seriously, we've been talking concerning handball there, where Plateau Peacock represents Nigeria at the African uh, Club Handball Championship taking place uh, in the Group C over there in Morocco, the city where they were playing. It's called Lyon. And really, we want to see our ladies doing well. We'll talk with Joel Anthony there. Uh, they actually mentioned that they want Nigerians to do well in any competition they find themselves. But at times, even when you want to do well, you see the motivator is always speaking because we've seen too many federations, size, super egos, and maybe super, uh, super falcons. Attention is always given to those uh, two, especially super egos. But when it comes to other sporting moments, maybe I should just uh, ask this from both of you. 
Uh, it's always very difficult. We've seen so many competitions of gymnastics, handball. You'll be surprised now by the time you get to find out. It could be the Federation themselves that actually went around to look for funds and all that and uh, be scampering for money here and there for, to, to get these athletes out of the country to go for this competition. Money is always the issue. No money, no money, and no money. Let's start from you, Joel. Okay, Tony, let's hear from you concerning what I just raised. Mm. I think um, they also have to do well on their own end to create 
great awareness for these things. And you would be surprised that there are a lot of enthusiasts out there who don't even be willing to invest in these things. Uh, seriously, we've been talking concerning Nigerian sport, how sport can really unite all of us if you just take it with the right approach. Sport is really a huge one, something that can bring all Nigerians, and we make a lot of money too if everything is done rightly anyway. We just have to follow the protocols of how those uh, nations are doing it. Joel Ajayi and Tene Balogun have been giving us insight to those uh, stories we've been treating on the show, sport, uh, 360 Sport on Trust TV. But right now, let's quickly talk about another set of stories that has to do with Nigerian referees. Lately, it's beginning to get better because uh, it seems NFF are trying their best to see Nigerian referee get that reckoning from CAF. And it's already yielding a uh, result because recently we got some Nigerian referee that we're officiating for this uh, AFCON. And now we're talking about Wafu B. Uh, well, we have uh, this story. CAF picks Abdul Salam Kazim and Mahmoud Yakub as refs for 2024 Wafubi Afcon duties. That's a good one coming from uh, this side of uh, Africa, where two of them will be at the, uh, that's a Wafubi action to at least refer games, and also as a uh, uh, center referee, and as also as assistant ref. A good one coming from that, because uh, Nigerians have been crying concerning this, that uh, what's happening, Nigeria referees don't get to feature in all these competitions, and it's actually opening up right now. Joel Ajayi, well, a good one at least. Uh, we have two of them. Uh, for Wafubi. Okay, big one there coming from Joel Ajayi and uh, Tony. Because for our time, I'll just uh, quickly flash you on the women, UEFA Women's Champions League that was played yesterday. You want to agree with me? Well, your team, Barcelona, <laughs> they didn't get it right. Let's quickly look at the results of UEFA Champions League Group C and D result for 
the uh, that's uh, women for the women 5-2 as now they were defeated by Bayern Munich the women whereas the ghost daughter Loman had a harder went harder against the Arsenal scoring a hat trick there uh, Caldente and Codina actually put two back Valerenga lost against Juventus Cantore was able to score for Juventus and also in group D now let's quickly look at group D result where Hamabi also defeated St. Paul in 2 nil. Hassan and Tenberg was able to score and Manchester City defeated Barcelona Femini, the women version of that team Lazel and Shaw able to defeat them. Tony, how are you feeling about this? <laughs> your, your women team didn't do well. They lost 2-0. Um, <laughs> you know, before I go on to the other things, I'll just remind you that that was how Argentina started in mm. before, before they went into win the World Cup. Okay. Like the first game. So, <laughs> <laughs> Okay, even though you don't want to agree that you, your team <laughs> lost out, you're actually using it against Nazi Solace. Well, let's see where they will get to, Tony. <laughs> What's the way to go there? Well, Joel Ajay, you, I, I saw you laughing when <laughs> she was talking. Just a, just a short one from you. Okay. Okay. Well, Joel, Joel Ajayi. Okay. Joel Ajayi, thank you so much for joining us on the show. 360 Sport this hour. Thank you. Okay. And Tony, <laughs> Barcelona, Feminine. Uh, good to have you on the show. 360 Sport. Thank you so much. Okay, for those out there watching the show 360 Sport, we just brought to you those stories there. For Super Eagles, wish them the best. Flying Eagles, let them fly ahead as they want to. Uh, Nigeria wants to see them doing well. On the show, 360 Sport from the entire crew. As Mary Zapun, I'm Adini Ajishafe. Sport is always business and fitness. Thanks for watching.